Go for main engine start. MRS 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International nice. Space Station. Second Sentimental journey into history and a journey into the future. The future of the space program will continue. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. I uh, want to just check in with Brooke Baldwin, who's at the Kennedy Space Center, the visitor complex with uh, some of the many people, and again, estimates of, of, uh, of as many as a million people uh, watching all around this area. Uh, Brooke, uh, what did you see from there? Pretty amazing. Um, it was spectacular. It's emotional. I grew up wanting to be an astronaut. And this truly, I've said it before, this is really a dream assignment covering this this final launch here. And Linda Johnston, I met uh, just after it launched, and I know your tears are dry, although I see you welling up a little bit now. Why is it emotional for you? Well, this is something I've always wanted to do. I have always been interested in the space program, and I think it's kind of a real shame that it's not going to be around anymore. But I understand why. Uh, it's just amazing to me the number of people that were here today, uh, all from all over the world. They were, I heard every dialect in the world. Every dialect, in, in every the, language. Every you language, from right. Texas, Linda, yes, with yes. your entire family over here. Linda, yeah. thank you very much. And just yeah. quickly, Ed, this is sort of a beginning and end moment for you. You were here in 81 on a kayak watching STS-1 in April of 81. Compare that moment to this. Um, Back then, it was exciting. It was the first, you know, the first time that it launched. It was the first time I saw it, and but uh, this time I think is a little more exciting for me because I got to bring my own family here. Bring your entire family. Yep. Thousands of people, Anderson. Thousands of people are here. I wanted to be an astronaut too until they took physics. Talked to Katie Coleman about her physics experience early on. She told me the other day she wasn't so great at physics earlier. So perhaps my future would have been much different had I talked to Katie many years ago. Back over to you guys. <laughs> Well, somehow she uh, recouped because she was at MIT when she first heard Sally Ride, uh, and that's when she first wanted to be an astronaut. So getting into MIT must be uh, a sign of some knowledge in science because there's no way I could have done it. Well, you know, it. when there's something like that that's not instinctive for you, I and mean, physics is not right. chemistry I love, but yeah. uh, it just means doesn't mean it's not for you. It means you got to work a little harder at it. Yeah. It was too hard for me to even <laughs> contemplate working. Uh, it may be the final launch of the space shuttle. It's certainly not the end of space travel. We're going to talk now about the future of space exploration. Where do we go? Our guest is John Elbin, Vice President of Boeing for Commercial uh, Crew Programs. Also, seen as John Zarella uh, joins me as well as uh, Katie Coleman, astronaut. Uh, first of all, what was it like for you just watching this? Oh, it was an emotional thing. The, um, I was with a group of engineers who have been working on the shuttle um, through its life, and uh, we all had tears in our eyes as the shuttle went up. It was, um, you know, punched through the clouds there. Incredible. And then kind of vanished. And it was just a, a really emotional setting. Because we all focus, of course, on the four astronauts who are on board, but, I mean, they are... They're there because of thousands of other people who have been working tirelessly for years uh, to make this a reality. Absolutely. People have, you know, that, that's their career. They have, we've invested our lives in that. And, to, um, and the shuttle's an icon of the space program. To have it come to an end, of course, is a sad thing. But I think it's important that we treat that as a transition point and look forward to what's ahead. So what, what do you see as what, what's ahead? What is the future? I think there's um, two clear paths ahead. Um, the space station is still up there in low Earth orbit. There are still U.S. astronauts and international astronauts on that space station. So and that's going to continue? That will continue, um, currently through 2020, hopefully beyond that. And um, so we need to have systems that can um, resupply, take crew, and keep that system healthy. And that's what the Atlantis is bringing a lot of supplies, going to be taking uh, some uh, used supplies uh, off the International Space Station. For, for now, until there's another kind of vehicle that can bring astronauts to a space station, uh, the U.S. is going to be working with Russia, paying uh, the Russian space program to use the Soyuz uh, spaceship to, to, uh, to bring people up. Yeah, that's, that's true for the near term. Um, we're working on a, a capsule that's part of the commercial crew program, along with other companies doing that. And we're on a path to be able, by 2015, to um, carry U.S. astronauts on a U.S. vehicle again to space station. So that's, that's for, for low Earth orbit. 
um, farther beyond. The Obama administration has talked about trying to get NASA to kind of think bigger, to think beyond low Earth, to, to use commercial flights, to commercial know. space flights for low Earth orbit. Um, I mean, is, Mar is a Mars trip possible? How far in the future do you see? Human exploration beyond low Earth orbit is the real prize for what's next. Right. We've been going to low Earth orbit for a long time, and we need to continue to use the station, but we really need to focus on beyond low Earth orbit. So the system we're working on for transportation to station is going to make that part of the transportation more affordable. So NASA then has funds available to invest in capabilities for exploration beyond low Earth orbit, back to the moon, to asteroids, and eventually on to Mars. But, but uh, I mean, I was listening to what President was saying, and, and he was saying that we need new technology. The technology right now isn't there necessarily for to deal, for instance, with the radiation that astronauts would get trying to uh, get to an asteroid. There's lots of technology that needs to be developed. Dealing with radiation is one. It's a long flight to Mars. Having systems that are capable of that kind of a long space flight are important. Mars has an atmosphere we have to be able to enter through. When we landed on the moon, there wasn't an atmosphere. And so um, those kind of technologies have to be developed so that we can then do those great missions. And in terms of unmanned spaceflight, there's still a lot ahead. I mean, uh, with, uh, with robot exploration uh, of, of Jupiter and, and uh, of Mars rover and other things. There's a lot to be learned in the solar system using robots exploring other places. Um, but people going there is, um, is just kind of what it's about. Yeah, uh, and we saw a great example of that today. John, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for sure. being Thank with you. us. Got to take a quick break. Uh, we'll talk uh, more with Katie Coleman, John Zarell, and others ahead. Well, we're going to be uh, showing you, uh, in a moment, we're going to show you all the shuttle missions, all the launches, uh, all 135 of them, uh, which uh, is just an extraordinary video that'll take about two minutes or so. So well, that, that's at the end of our program. But we want to tell you about the retirement homes for our long-serving shuttles. 21 museums put in bids to house the shuttle one, once they're all de de uh, decommissioned. Only three sites receive the honor. Shuttle Atlantis will stay in Cape Canaveral at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Endeavor is headed to the California Science Center. And Discovery's new home will be the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. As a tribute to all the shuttles and the people's behind, people behind them, here's 134 launches in 134 seconds, plus the one that just made history today. Take a look and enjoy. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have engine start. start. Four, three, two, one. And we have lift off. And the first thing is light the captain up to is on its way. Space Lab 2. Shuttle has cleared the power. Roll program initiated. It's in controlling now. Roger roll, Challenger. Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Off of Columbia in the first dedicated medical research flight. Six man crew on a Department of Defense flight. Climb to 28.5 degrees inclination orbit. Atlantis speed now 500 miles an hour. Maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. Heading engines at 100%. Well, the vehicle's rate of speed will virtually triple. Flight controllers standing by for burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Three main engines, second stage. Columbia Houston performance nominal. On a head down position, on course. Space Shuttle Columbia with the Microgravity Science Laboratory. Starts out about 1G vertical acceleration. All systems on board are continuing to perform well. Good solid rocket booster separation. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission finally underway. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery, beginning America's new journey. Penultimate journey to shore up the International Space Station. The final liftoff of Discovery. Houston Endeavor, all program. Roger roll, Endeavor. Go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. The final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. The program is 
Roger, roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight. You just heard him say a sentimental journey into history. Katie Coleman, uh, for you, what's this day been like? Just watching the space shuttle fleet bring in four more people to space. I mean, now we live there. It's a big accomplishment for that fleet. And uh, I liked what they said, America and the world riding on the shoulders of the space shuttle. And the programs will continue, even though the space shuttle won't? The space shuttle is one of the ways up and down. We've got a space station up in space that uh, we're using. It's amazing. It's enormous. The guys up there are ready for the shuttle visit, and I think it's a bright future. Well, it's an honor to uh, have spent the day with you. Thanks for being with us. And John Zarella is going to continue on CNN throughout the day. Thanks for sharing this moment in history with us. CNN Newsroom begins right now with Frederica Whitfield. Frederica? so much. Thank you so much. And of course, we're going to have another look at that history. Hello, everyone. I'm Frederica Whitfield. Let's get you up to speed right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, all three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. All right, just in case you missed it, or maybe you just need to see it again, NASA launches its 135th and final space shuttle mission. Just a half an hour ago, Atlantis soared into orbit. One last spine-tingling time. Bad weather had threatened the launch. The shuttle program is ending after 30 years due to cost and the age of the orbiters.